Hello all. Today we are going to learn about requirement analysis. So let's start with the lecture. Before starting with the lecture, let me introduce myself. I am Professor Poona Mahale, working in IT Department of Kikewa College of Engineering, Education and Research. So let's start today's lecture with an objective. At the end of today's lecture, you will be able to analyze the software requirement by various modeling techniques. At the end of today's lecture, you will be able to understand the requirement engineering task. So, in today's lecture, we are going to learn a requirement engineering task that is requirement elicitation. So, let's start today's lecture by the definition of requirement elicitation. So, elicitation means eliciting the requirement. It is the task of requirement engineering that helps the customer to define what is required. What are the requirement of customer? How that requirements can be identified? So in the requirement engineering, how to identify customer requirements that we are going to learn in detail. And for understanding customer requirement, there are various techniques that are carried out for uh, capturing the exact need of customer. So one technique is nothing but a requirement elicitation. So here we identify, we define, uh, it is a task basically that helps uh, the customer to define what is required. So uh, this task is helpful for customer and with this uh, task, customer can define what exactly he wants. And for specifying his needs, there are certain steps that are performed in requirement elicitation. So what are that steps? So these are the steps that are carried out under requirement elicitation. Here, first step is collaborative requirement gathering. Then second is quality function deployment. Third is user scenarios. Fourth is elicitation work product. So we'll see one by one all these steps. So let's start uh, this process. Uh, let's start understanding this process with the help of first step that is collaborative requirement gathering. So collaboration is nothing but an, uh, working in together. So there are a number of people that works in together for understanding the requirement from the customer. And the aim of these activities to identify the problem, what exactly customer wants, that we are able to identify with this technique. So gathering the requirement is a team-oriented activity. And for ga requirement gathering, there are a number of people that works for understanding, for collecting the requirements. So here a manager, software developer, customer, and all the stakeholders can work together for understanding, for collecting the requirement. And aim of this activity is to identify the problem. That means identify the exact need of the customer. After identification of the cus uh, customer need, then identify the solution, how we can implement that particular problem that we identify in the second, uh, in this activity. Then negotiate different approaches. So here we check whether that particular uh, solution is feasible or not. If that particular solution is not feasible, then we negotiate on the solution and the different approaches that are that we can uh, easily implement. Then fourth uh, aim of these activities to specify the preliminary set of solution requirements. So here we uh, identify the requirement and we try to implement the requirement that is very much needed. So prioritizing the requirement is one of the activity that is carried out and the main, the basic requirement is implemented. So in the collaborative requirement gathering, basically these activities this activity is conducted for understanding the requirement. The meeting for collaborative requirement gathering is conducted to discuss all the issues that we have uh, specified in this slide. So the basic guideline for conductive, uh, conducting collaborative requirement gathering meeting are meeting is conducted and attended by both software engineers as well as customer. Then agenda is uh, suggested that the for uh, cover all the points that are needed for understanding the requirement. A facilitator, uh, maybe a customer, developer or outsider, uh, outsider controls uh, of the meeting. Then the uh, definition mechanism including worksheets, charts, wall sticker, chat room, projector is used for conducting this collaborative requirement gathering meeting. So main agenda is uh, to conduct the meeting 
is the agenda is gather all the requirements of the customer so all the software team members software engineers software managers software uh, members of marketing and then the product engineer all works together in this meeting then the next activity uh, of requirement elicitation is nothing but a quality function deployment so quality function deployment that is also known as an qfd uh, so qfd is a deployment technique that translate the customer needs into a technical requirement yes we all know customer are not always a technical expert so uh, whatever requirements suggested by our tail uh, uh, whatever requirement are captured from the customer that are not in the technical form always that could be in the natural language form so that requirements we need to understand we need to convert into technical requirement so uh, quality function deployment is a one technique that is used to translate the customer needs into technical requirement so in other words we can say uh, qfd defines the requirement in a way that maximize the customer satisfaction so quality function de deployment uh, includes three types of requirement normal requirement expected requirement and exciting requirement so one by one we'll see normal requirements so normal requirements normal requirements these are the requirements that are clearly stated by the customer and hence uh, this requirement this requirement must be present for customer satisfaction so these requirement are clearly stated by customer and customer wants this requirement in the product so for example you can consider a graphics a display a specific system function specific output format these are the requirement that are clearly stated by the customer and that requirements uh, are needed by the customer and the product should contain that requirement product should consist that requirement the next come expected requirements so these requirements are implicit type of requirement these requirement are not clearly stated by the customer but even then customer expect them yes this type of requirement are not stated by customer but customer assumes that these uh, things will be there in our product so for example the develop system must provide easy human interaction the system should be menu driven the system should be user friendly the system uh, should have hot key buttons these are the requirement that are not spe uh, specified by the customer but customer expects from the system then next come exciting requirement so exciting requirement these are the requirement these uh, that are not neither stated by the customer nor expected by the customer but software developer add this requirement to make customer more satisfied so these are unexpected customer not expect this requirement but for achieving customer satisfaction developer add this requirement so you can consider an example of word processing uh, software Uh, where uh, earlier software can have only standard cap uh, capabilities are expected by the customer like uh, system should have or word should have a word editing facilities new document should be created saved these are the fa facilities that are expected by customer but certain facilities like it will be surprise for a customer if a page layout capabilities are added advanced graphical features are added grammar check facilities are added right so these are the ex exciting requirement these are not stated by customer but we are adding that requirement for making customer satisfied so these these requirement are called as an exciting requirement now next uh, that is nothing but an user scenarios uh, which is used in uh, eliciting requirement so during a uh, requirement gathering overall vision for the system functions and features get developed yes uh, but in order to understand how these functions and features are used by different classes and users and developer we need a scenario so uh, if we want to understand a user need clearly if we want to understand how the functions and feature are used by different users classes developers and user creates a set of scenario and those scenario 
will identify all these issues that means if we are if are considered an example of railway reservation system that is used by passenger and that is also used by uh, uh, admin right then how these two user are using the system if you want to understand then user scenarios plays an important role they specify how these uh, users are using the scenario so uh, these scenarios are called as an use cases so in a use cases in a use case diagram basically in use case scenarios a scenario is a textual description that is prepared so use case specifically uh, provides the details of the scenario it identify all the issues like how the user is using the system uh, what are the interaction mechanism that are used by user that all are specified by use case so use case in simple word is nothing but a role played by actor so passenger can check the availability so check availability it's an use case and passenger is an actor so in, in a user scenarios there are different terms that are used and that is nothing but an that is nothing but an use cases then next is nothing but an actors so use cases are nothing but an role played by actor so what are actors actors are nothing but an the human entity that are involved in the system that are interacting with the system so human entity which will be responsible for system interaction is called as an actor and the role played by that human entity is called as an use case so there are types of actors primary actor and secondary actor now primary actors primary actor these actor interact with the system to achieve required function the actor who initiates first requirement is called or who initiates an interaction is called as an primary actor whereas an secondary actor who gives an reply to a primary actor is called as a secondary actor so secondary actor supports the system so that primary actor can do their work so if check availability is an use case the primary actor is who is going to check the availability of seat passenger right so if we are considering railway reservation system so passenger going to uh, check the availability of seat so passenger is the first actor who is going to interact with the system and the secondary actors are the system actors who is going to respond and the responding actors are called as an secondary actors so secondary actor supports the system so that primary actor can do their work suppose primary actor is checking the availability then secondary actor give the reply uh, of available seat so this is nothing but an user scenarios next comes elicitation work product so elicitation work product is uh, the work product produced by requirement elicitation process so after performing elicitation the work product the output that we are going to generate is called as an elicitation work product so the work product produced by requirement elicitation is depend upon the size of the system or the system that is to be built so the work product that we are going to generate after performing elicitation is uh, called as an elicitation work product and the size of that work product is totally depend upon how complex the system is so the information produced as a consequences of requirement gathering includes a statement of need and feasibility so after performing elicitation we can have an output of a statement of need and feasibility what is needed by the customer that the detailed statement it can be a work product then list of all requirement can be the work product of elicitation then description of technical environment description of various stakeholders uh, the set of use case scenario these can be the elicitation work product or the output of elicitation technique now next uh, that is nothing but an requirement analysis by different scenarios so how that requirement analysis is done by different scenarios that we'll see in the next lecture but there are four scenario based modeling so elements of analysis model are scenario based elements 
flow oriented elements and class based element along with that behavioral elements so uh, these are the elements of analysis model but in today's lecture we have learned the elicitation process along with the steps that are carried out in the elicitation requirement elicitation so there are four steps that are carried out in requirement elicitation and that is nothing but a collaborative requirement gathering quality function deployment user scenarios elicitation work product so hope you all have understood this requirement elicitation techniques thank you all for watching this video if you have any doubt any uh, suggestions please comment your queries doubts and suggestions in the comment box thank you all